Hello, and welcome back to recitation. Uh, in, the, in this problem, what I'd like us to do is uh, I'd like us to sketch the graphs in three dimensions of these uh, functions. So z here is a function of, the, of x and y. On this uh, second one, z is also a function of x and y. It just happens not to depend on y. Um, when you graph these, I'd suggest to uh, consider slices. So what happens if you consider x equals 0, or if you consider z equals 0? Uh, as you graph these, let's see, see what you can do. So why don't you pause the video, and uh, I'll check back with you in a moment, and I can show you how I solve these. OK, welcome back. So why don't we start by, uh, by looking at this function. z is square root of x squared plus y squared. OK, I'll try to always draw my axes in the same way as we do in lecture. So x is pointing uh, towards us, y to the right, and z up. So um, as I suggested, I think a, a nice way to get started with these problems is to, uh, is to just try setting the variables x and y variously equal to 0, and then seeing, uh, instead of a surface in that case, then we'll get a curve, and we'll see what curve we get. So for instance, if we set uh, x equals to 0, then we just get z is the square root of y squared. So we just get that z is the absolute value of y. So what that means is that whatever the surface looks like, we know what it looks like if we slice it in the blackboard, in the plane of the blackboard. We know uh, that it just looks like the, this is just the graph of the function absolute value of y, z equals absolute value of y. So uh, now if you think about it, uh, what I just said works just as well for x instead of for y. So if we, if we were to graph this in the, uh, in the xz plane where we set y equals to 0, then we would get, OK, I'm going to try to draw this. So uh, let me draw that in blue, actually. So, um, In the, the blue is in the xz plane, and the white is in the uh, yz plane. OK, now I think what's going to be really illustrative, illustrative is if we think about what happens uh, as we fix values of z. So well, obviously, if we set z equals to 0, then there's just one solution, which is this point here. Um, but what's going to be interesting is if we set z to be some positive value. So for instance, let's take z to be um, 2. So for instance, if we set z equals 2, then we get 2 equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Solving this, this is the same as saying x squared plus y squared equals 4. So what that tells us is that at the height z equals 2, we're just going to have a circle of radius 2. This is just the equation for the circle of radius 2. And so at height uh, 2, we just have a circle. And actually, as you can see, there's nothing special about 2. At every height, we're just going to have a circle. And so this is what's called a cone. Okay. Now, um, for b, so we, we, can, we can expect when we go over here to b that something funny is going to happen because it doesn't depend on y. So let's see if we can see how the fact that z doesn't depend on y, how this enters into our picture. So I'll just walk over here. And we'll consider z equals x squared. OK. So again, we have our x-axis. x, y, and z axes. Now, uh, let's, let's consider what this uh, looks like when we intersect with the x, z plane, so when we set y equals to 0. Well, setting y equal to 0 actually doesn't change the equation, and we get z equals x squared. So we know what that looks like. It's a parabola. 
In this parabola, I want you to think that it, it's you know, coming out at us. So it's in the xz plane, going uh, in and out of the board. But now if you think about it, uh, what it means to say that this function doesn't depend on y, what that means is that we have the exact same picture at every value of y. So if we go out here, then we're going to have the same picture. And if we go over here, we're going to have the same picture. And in fact, what you're going to get is you're going to get a prism. Oh, that's really hard to read. Let's see if we can. So let me, since that's a bit hard to read on the axes, let's, let's draw this again. What we'll get is we're going to have a, a prism which looks like a parabola. Uh, it looks like a sheet that's just stretched out in the shape of a parabola. And so uh, this uh, we could call a uh, prism of a parabola. Now, uh, let's, let's see if we can get any more insight from these two pictures. So look what happened in, in, in this instance. So here, the function z. Uh, it, it obviously didn't depend on y. And we could see that uh, by looking at the graph because you know, as you vary y, the picture had to be unchanged. So, um, uh, so, so the fact that this was a prism in y and the fact that the, that the function didn't depend on y are, are, uh, are one and the same fact. Now if we go over to the cone, okay, so here our function uh, z very much depended on both x and y. But you notice that uh, it depended on x and y only in the sense, so z is actually equal just to the radius r, which is x squared plus y squared. So the fact that this cone, uh, thank you, the square root of x squared plus y squared, so, um, so so the fact that this, uh, that this only depends on the radius and not the, ang the relative angle of x and y is why we got what this is an example of a surface of re revolution. So we can always expect that if the dependence of z on, on the variables x and y, if you can actually just rewrite that as a dependence on r, then you'll get this nice radial symmetry, just like we had translational symmetry for the, um, for the prism. And I think I'll leave it at that.